Speaking about the relationship between what God does and what we can do, the Apostle Paul wrote in his letter to the Ephesians, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God. Today's gospel reading from Matthew, which you just heard, puts us on thin ice when it comes to thinking about that relationship, the relationship between our works and our salvation. It's important, therefore, to let go of any preconceived notions regarding what the parable of the sheep and goats is about and to listen deeply for the good news that Jesus brings. Kate Bowler is a professor of religion at Duke Divinity School, where she specializes in the study of the prosperity gospel, a belief system that sees fortune as a blessing from God and misfortune as a mark of God's disapproval. When, at age 35, she was diagnosed with stage 4 colon cancer, Bowler realized, to her surprise, that she had been living with precisely that conviction, believing that she could control the shape and the trajectory of her life with a surge of determination and a heavy dose of positive thinking. Her diagnosis, of course, turned that on its head. Her book, Everything Happens for a Reason, was our read for the October Book Club. In it, she tells her story and offers her observations on dying and what it has taught her about living. Buller also moderates a podcast called Everything Happens. Each podcast opens with these words spoken by Buller. Quote, the self-help and wellness industry will try to tell you that you can always fix your life. Eat this and you won't get sick. Lose weight and you won't be lonely. Believe with your whole heart and God will provide. But, she continues, I am here to look into your beautiful eyes and tell you that there are some things you can fix and there are some things you cannot. And of course she's right. Although some of us are better at this than others, we can fix certain things like a squeaky wheel with some oil, a torn document with some tape, a cracked vase with some glue, the more skilled among us can fix a broken vacuum cleaner, a leaky pipe, or a faulty wire. Just recently, I watched a video of a guy fix a completely shattered phone screen with toothpaste and rice. But as 2020 has made abundantly clear, there are some things we cannot fix or control, no matter how much positive thinking or fierce determination we muster. Among them, hurricanes and wildfires, the global pandemic, and other people's problems. There are some things you can fix, and there are some things you cannot. This is an important and necessary truth of which to be reminded at any time, but as I suggested at the beginning, it's especially important today as we look at that gospel from the 25th chapter of Matthew. It's just two days before Jesus will be hung on the cross. He's with his disciples at the Mount of Olives, and at least in Matthew, this is his final teaching. You heard it read just a moment ago. Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes, he will separate people, putting the sheep to his right and the goats to his left. Speaking to the sheep, he said, I was hungry, and you gave me food, thirsty, and you gave me something to drink, a stranger, and you welcomed me, naked, and you clothed me, sick, and you took care of me, and in prison, and you visited me. The sheep were genuinely surprised and asked, Lord, when did we see you and do these things? And Jesus answered, just as you did it to the least of these, you did it to me. 
Then Jesus turned his attention to the goats and demanded that they depart from him. To them, he said, I was hungry and you did not feed me, thirsty and you did not give me something to drink, a stranger, naked, sick and in prison, and you did nothing. The goats were similarly surprised and asked, Lord, when did we see you and not do these things? And Jesus responded, just as you did not do it to the least of these, you did not do it to me. Given that we live in a world with a propensity for doing it ourselves and making our own way and earning our keep and meriting our successes, it's no wonder that this parable is all too often mistakenly read, preached, and treated as a formula, a prescription for getting into heaven while steering clear of the eternal fire, a recipe for eternity. As a kid, I remember singing this camp song. Perhaps you'll know it, and no, I'm not going to sing it for you, but the opening line goes like this. I just want to be a sheep. Bah. I don't know if that was written based on Matthew 25, but it sure seems to have been. The threat of being cast away as a goat is frightening, while the hope of being recognized as a sheep who is welcomed into heaven is comforting. I just want to be a sheep. Even so, we must be reminded there are some things you can fix and there are some things you cannot and we need to be reminded of this because you cannot make yourself a sheep. No matter how hard you try, how good you are, how generously and kindly and compassionately you behave, you cannot earn your way into heaven or secure your place in eternity or sit at the right hand of the Son of Man by any effort of your own. The truth is, we are, each one of us, a messy, tangled up mixture of both sheep and goat, equal parts, generous and stingy. Put another way, we are simultaneously saint and sinner. And that is a makeup we cannot fix or change or control. As the Apostle Paul put it, I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do, this I keep on doing. In other words, no matter how hard you try, you cannot always do the good and right sheep thing. To understand the message of this parable, just as in other parables, it's helpful to consider where you find yourself in it. For example, in the parable of the prodigal son, different truths are manifest depending on if you see yourself as the prodigal or as the brother. And so it is the case here in the parable of the sheep and goats. To be fair, no one in their right mind wants to see themselves as a goat. But so desperate are we to be numbered among the sheep and to be welcomed into heaven that we overlook the other place to find ourselves in this parable. I don't want to be a goat, and I can't make myself be a sheep. So what's left? Well... What about the least of these? What about those who are on the receiving end of the acts of mercy? What about those in need? That is precisely who we are before Jesus. All of us, every last one of us. Hear this. I understand we are not accustomed to thinking of ourselves in this way, but... Just as the needs of one of the least of these were met by the sheep in the parable, so also our deepest needs have been met for us by our good and great shepherd, Lord Jesus. The truth and the good news of this parable begins here. 
we must come to terms with the fact that there are some things we can fix and there are other things we cannot. We cannot secure our own salvation. We cannot absolve ourselves of our sin. We cannot redeem ourselves. We cannot restore our relationship with our maker. That work, all of it, is reserved for God and for God alone. So know this. Through Jesus Christ, you have been relieved of the burden of worrying if you have done enough, of feeling guilty for what you have not done, and of thinking that there is something you must do. You've been relieved of the burden of working to earn your place, working to secure your future, and working to avoid doom. Your salvation has already been secured for you. You've been saved by grace through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is a gift of God. In other words, for you, one of the least of these, your need, your deepest need has been met. You have been fed by the body and the blood of Jesus. Your thirst has been quenched in the waters of baptism, and you have been welcomed, clothed, healed, and forgiven. Again, there are some things you can fix, and there are some things you cannot. So to be sure, you cannot fix or control or manage or earn or merit your salvation, but you can make the world a better place. And your good works, your acts of mercy can make a difference. You can love and serve and give and show compassion to your neighbor. Martin Luther said, God does not need your good works, but the world does. In other words, your good works, your acts of mercy won't earn you a place at the right hand of our Lord, but they are so desperately needed. So go now, having been freed from the burden of working out your salvation, and give yourself away in love. Feed as you have been fed. Quench someone's thirst as yours has been quenched. Welcome, clothe, Heal and forgive with abandon. These are the things you can do. In the name of Christ, amen.